Good afternoon and welcome to the ordination and installation service for Sterling Link. So glad to have all of you joining us um, via the live stream this afternoon and um, there are a few of us gathered in the sanctuary as well. So welcome to all of you as we begin this day. Um, I am Bishop Joy Mortensen Levy, and this is my second ordination. Um, Sterling almost got to be the first one. He is uh, less than 24 hours from having been the first one. So I rejoice this day in celebrating uh, with Sterling, um, mostly because this day comes after years of discerning, years of listening to the call of God, um, years of study, years of pastors and laity and friends and family and all kinds of people um, who have helped get, get him to this day, um, and Sterling's um, leaning into the Holy Spirit and listening to this call. Um, so this day comes after, after much, much, much preparation, much, much listening to the voice of God. And so it is a day of incredible celebration, and thank you for being gathered around Sterling and with Sterling this day. I would invite you, um, the camera shot is a little outside of our baptismal font today, so as we give thanks for baptism, I would invite you to imagine perhaps your favorite baptismal font, or just imagine a rush of healing, cleansing water as we begin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, O God, maker and ruler of all things. Your vo voice thundered over the waters at creation. You water the mountains and send springs into the valleys to refresh and satisfy all living things. Through the waters of the flood, you carried those in the ark to safety. Through the sea, you led your people, Israel, from slavery into freedom. In the wilderness, you nourished them with water from the rock, and you brought them across the river Jordan to the promised land. By the baptism of his death and resurrection, your son Jesus has carried us to safety and freedom. The floods shall not overwhelm us and the deep shall not swallow us up. For Christ has brought us over to the land of promise. He sends us to make disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit. Wash away sins in this cleansing water. Clothe the baptized with Christ and claim your children. No longer slave and free, no longer male and female, but one with all the baptized in Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'm Pastor Dean Kirst. I have known Sterling for the last 19 years as his pastor here at Lakefield Lutheran Church. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, you built your church on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, and you instituted the office of the ministry of word and sacrament so that the apostolic and prophetic work might continue throughout the ages. 
Grant that Sterling Link, now to be ordained, may carry out this ministry faithfully in the power of your Holy Spirit. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Mark Dressel. I'm the pastor at Trinity Lutheran Church in Lake Mills, and I had the honor of uh, serving with Sterling as he did his internship. I also have the honor of doing the readings for today. So our first reading is from Numbers chapter 11. So the Lord said to Moses, gather for me 70 of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of meeting, and have them take their place there with you. I will come down and talk with you there, and I will take some of the spirit that is on you and put it on them, and they shall bear the burden of the people along with you, so that you will not bear it all by yourself. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he, and he gathered seventy elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him, and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the seventy elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad. And the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent. And so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Here ends our first reading. And now we're reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now concerning spiritual gifts, siblings, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing, by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the, the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now the Holy Gospel according to Luke from the ninth and 10th chapters. And I invite everyone who is here to stand. And if you're at home, well, you can stand as well. Then Jesus called the 12 together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. He said to them, Take nothing for your journey, no staff, nor bag, nor bread, nor money, not even an extra tunic. Whatever house you enter, stay there and leave from there. Wherever, you do, wherever they do not welcome you, as you are leaving that town, shake the dust off your feet 
as a testimony against them. They departed and went through the villages, bringing the good news and curing diseases everywhere. Later, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. If anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cheer the sick who are there, and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off and protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Eventually the seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name even the demons submit to us. And Jesus said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I'm so grateful at this opportunity, Sterling, but I've never gotten to preach at an ordination before and probably didn't listen well enough to preachers at ordinations I have been to, which almost certainly includes my own. So that leaves me at a bit of a loss on how this works. Funerals, though, I do know, and funeral sermons, those are occasions where the word may be a little about a person and their life. But really, the main point of the story is Jesus. So, Sterling, I'm just going to pretend you're dead and act like I'm preaching over your dead body. <laughs> in some way, it seems fair. In another place, the Apostle Paul tells you you're already dead, buried with Christ by baptism into death. Picturing that reality seems like a reasonable starting point for ordaining you into a role that really isn't about you but is in Christ. Your own life and the lives of your congregation, lives not just now in our struggles and efforts, <clears throat> but held securely in life eternal, one in Christ. We have other words from Paul today for that life in Christ Jesus, together as activated by the Spirit for the communal good. These promises of the living body of Christ also can point to death. See, something, Sterling, you've been practicing at saying goodbye to in endings you've confronted through these years, other ways of life that didn't continue on. Those were also some of how your gifts were used for the common good in pursuit of life. Some of your past vocations and efforts and employments we should certainly confess as God's work. Clearly, ministry and what God is doing doesn't only have life in the church. As an example, and in one vocation you exemplify with such dedication, and in which I'm grateful you get to continue, you claim centrally being a father, 
and the love and care of God the Father becomes embodied through you. So while some callings and aspects of life continue on, there are the endings and life that didn't. It's one kind of death. Death also relates to later in our chapter of 1 Corinthians, when members of the body of Christ reflect on their place. It's playful sorts of language, but is also deadly serious. Paul imagines a foot saying, I don't want to be a foot. I'd rather be a nose. After all, people say feet smell, so why can't I be in charge of the sense of smell? You've played, shared plenty of those conversations the last five or so years, questioning whether you are really a foot or whatever body part is associated with being ordained as a pastor, earthy but holy. Anyway, you've faithfully questioned and wondered and resisted and struggled in identifying yourself with this particular role in the body of Christ. And so this is a death. Your struggles are done. You may still question your worthiness, and I'll pray that you hold that question every day, but that exactly exemplifies the point that it's not you. We've celebrated you in the Synod Candidacy Committee for years as a strong candidate with great gifts for the church, but that's not ultimately it. Finally, it's not about you and not what you want to do or feel good about doing. This is so simple as that the body of Christ needs a body part that will do what you're going to do. Decora Lutheran said they need a big toe, if I can allude to Bill Murray and Stripes, and they've called you to be that big toe. In some very deep way, then, it doesn't matter who Sterling is or was or any of that. The old you is dead. The central matter is that you are being set aside for this role in the body of Christ, so the Spirit can operate through you. Paul says then that it's not about your feelings of internal call, not that you're prepared, examined, and approved to quote what we'll hear momentarily, and it's not even just about a congregational vote, but is the work of the Holy Spirit. She's the one who raises life from death, who enlivens and enables us, who works these divine powers of love and grace and trust in us and binds us all together in it. So she gets the credit. And even on days when she gets the blame, when you're not as good of a body part as the church might prefer and the body doesn't cooperate, still that's okay because she works forgiveness and reconciliation. And to repeat all over again, she raises life from death. That credit and that focus is something I really value about your perspective in being church together. It fits with your picking our gospel reading today of this group of 70 sent out the big shared mission of the church, being followers of Jesus together. It's not just pastors, definitely not pastors who are holier than the rest. Maybe of special note in that gospel passage, Jesus says we don't rejoice because of our usual metrics. It's not from showing off your powers and talents in curing disease or in stopping the virus or overcoming evil. It's not in any kind of numbers, attendance, conversions, conversations, budgets, work hours in a week, etc., etc. We rejoice because our names are written in the book of life. Again and again, we repeat that death has no hold, that we already and daily are brought into the new creation because that Holy Spirit keeps breathing into you, resuscitating you, giving you life in Christ. That's more to the point than any of that other baloney, even if plenty of the baloney business of the church will occupy much of your energies. Still, trust for yourself and remind others we live in Christ. Finally, though, because you and I, Sterling, are cynical enough and silly enough that we can't avoid noticing it, this doesn't really matter. It's great that we're laying hands on you today, especially Bishop Joy. It's great we have a special service in an allegedly holy place. 
and observe that you've passed the benchmarks and have a proper call and we stick to the Augsburg Confession in that way. We're even wearing some schmancy clothes, but that doesn't really matter. You're going to be a great pastor, a faithful pastor, a caring pastor, a diligent pastor, a wise pastor, a fun pastor. Great. It doesn't matter. Because the Holy Spirit is doing her thing anyway. Even outside the assembly. That first reading had ordained others to share the load with the leader, but that roving spirit didn't stick only with those who'd been gathered in the tent of meeting and in church. The outsiders do it too. Just because God so loved the world, and because Jesus won't stop at spreading his life to every nook and cranny of creation, that's not up to you. The best you'll be able to do is rush to keep up and rejoice in life. Or try not to. Go ahead and give it your best shot. See how long you can stay dead and play dead when you've got a God like this sweeping you up into the action, constantly raising life from death. Amen. Together we confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I invite Bishop Joy forward and Sterling. I present for ordination to the Ministry of Word and Sacrament Sterling Tremaine Link, who has been prepared, examined, and approved for this ministry and who has been called by the Church to this ministry through Decorah Lutheran Church in the South Central Synod of Wisconsin of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. 
Thanks be to God. All baptized Christians are called to share in Christ's ministry of love and service in the world, to the glory of God and for the sake of the human family and the whole creation. According to apostolic usage, you are now to be entrusted with the office of word and sacrament ministry in the one holy Catholic Church by the laying on of hands and prayer. A reading from John. Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. A reading from Matthew. Jesus said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. A reading from 1 Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after, thanks, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat, this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Before Almighty God, to whom you must give account, and in the presence of this assembly, I ask, will you assume this office, believing that the church's call is God's call to ministry and to the ministry of word and sacrament? I will, and I ask God to help me. The church in which you are to be ordained confesses that the Holy Scriptures are the word of God and are the norm for its faith and life. We accept, teach, and confess the apostles, the Nicene, and the Athanasian creeds. We also acknowledge the Lutheran confessions as true witnesses and faithful exposition of the Holy Scriptures. Will you, therefore, preach and teach in accordance with the Holy Scriptures and these creeds and confessions. I will, and I ask God to help you. Will you be diligent in your study of the Holy Scriptures and faithful in your use of the means of grace? Will you pray for God's people, nourish them with the word and sacraments, and lead them by your own example in faithful service and holy living? I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you give faithful witness in the world that God's love may be known in all that you do? I will, and I ask God to help you. Almighty God, who has given you the will to do these things, graciously give you the strength and compassion to perform them. Amen. I invite you to stand and to respond to each petition with the words, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. For the whole church on earth, that it may hunger for truth, thirst after righteousness, and be filled with your love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For Sterling Link, called to the ministry of word and sacrament in the church. That sustained by your Holy Spirit, he may carry out this ministry with joy and a spirit of bold trust. That he may serve your people, build up your church, and glorify your name. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all who serve in leadership in the church, for all who support the mission of the church, and for all who are sustained by the church. 
that we may strengthen one another in serving Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the peace of the church, that our cooperation may flourish, our divisions may be overcome, and that united in Christ, we may serve the world and bear witness to the good news. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all the saints who have gone before us and who in Christ surround us, that their witness may give us courage and steadfastness until the day of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the nations of the world and their leaders, that they may work for justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the whole creation, that everything you have made may fulfill your purpose and that we may exercise care for your diverse gifts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, the lonely, the forgotten, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. We don't want to make Sterling stick out on Neil any longer than he has to. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, we bless you for your infinite love in Christ our Lord, in whom we have redemption and forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. We thank you that by his death, your son overcame death, and that raised by your mighty power, he gives us new life. We praise you that having ascended into heaven, Christ pours out his gifts abundantly on the church, making some apostles, some prophets, some pastors and teachers to equip your people for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. invite pastors who are here to come forward. Let us pray. Eternal God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, pour out your Holy Spirit upon your servant, Sterling, and fill him with the gifts of grace for the ministry of word and sacrament. Bless his proclamation of your word, and administration of your sacraments, so that your church may be gathered for praise and strengthened for service. Make him a faithful pastor, patient teacher, and wise counselor. Grant that in all things he may serve without reproach, that your people may be renewed and your name be glorified in the church. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Receive the stole as a sign of your work, and live in obedience to the Lord Jesus, serving his people and remembering his promise. Come to me, all you that are weary, and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Hear the words of the Apostles. 
Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called. And again, take heed to yourself and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you guardians to feed the church that God has obtained with the blood of his own son. And again, tend the flock of God that is in your charge, not under compulsion, but willingly, not for sore and gain, but eagerly. Do not lord it over those in your charge, but be examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will win the crown of glory that never fades away. And again, think of us in this way, as servants of Christ and stewards of God's mysteries. Moreover, it is required of stewards that they be found trustworthy. Sterling, care for God's people, bear their burdens, and do not betray their confidence. So decide, discipline yourself in life and teaching that you preserve the truth. Give no occasion for false security or illusionary hope. Witness faithfully to word and deed to all people. Give and receive comfort as you serve within the church. And be of good courage, for God has called you, and your labor in the Lord is not in vain. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in everything good, so that you may do God's will, working in you that which is pleasing in God's sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Face, face the crowd. Will all of you who are assembled here this afternoon, as the people of God and speaking for the whole church, receive Sterling as a messenger of Jesus Christ, sent by God to serve all people with the gospel of hope and salvation? Will you regard him as a servant of Christ? We will, and we ask God to help us. Will you pray for him, help and honor him for his work's sake, and in all things strive to live together in the peace and unity of Christ. We will, and we ask God to help us. Let it now be acclaimed that Sterling is a called and ordained minister in the Church of Christ. He has Christ's authority to preach the word of God and administer the sacraments, serving God's people as together we bear God's creative and redeeming love to all the world. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us all show our <laughs> celebratory applause. <laughs> now I have to find my page again. Fourteen. <laughs> Fourteen is the page. Here is the page. So we have the unique opportunity as well this day, not only to see Sterling be ordained, um, but also to be installed. And 2020 gives us an amazing opportunity to uh, be in one building and uh, to have rep representatives of his calling congregation, Decorah Lutheran, to be present. So we will now um, also install Sterling. Having been authorized by the church to install Sterling Link, our co-worker in the gospel, as pastor of Decorah Lutheran Church, I now ask for certification of this call. Sterling, after prayerful consideration and consulting with the Holy Spirit, we of Decorah Lutheran Church have called Sterling Link as pastor. I present him and this letter certifying the call. I get it. Okay. <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> I got to. I got to make sure it's valid, Sterling. It looks good. It looks good. I think we can proceed. <laughs> Sterling, in the presence of this assembly, will you commit yourself to this new trust and responsibility? 
I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you carry out your duties in harmony with the constitutions of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America? I will, and I ask God to help me. And you can look again to your audience. Sterling, now the office of pastor is committed to you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Sterling, you have been called to be among us to baptize, to teach, and to forgive sins. You have been called to be among us to proclaim the good news of Jesus the Christ. You have been called to be among us to preside at the Lord's Supper. May the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. All you have to remember is to mimic me um, in your ministry. You'll do fine. Okay. I think. <laughs> 19 years of putting up with me, I, I think I've done well. Good. Okay. Together, um, we are gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Let us now pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is Go My Children With My Blessing. just like to thank our music director here at Lakeview, Lynn Najum, for providing music today, and to our videographer, Terry Warnke, for live streaming this and putting the video together. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news.